All right, I'm going to be answering question number eight. Which of the following is the most accurate definition of stress shielding? A. The decrease in physiological stress in bone due to a stiffer structure sharing the load. B. Electrochemical potential created between two metals in physical contact and immersed in a conductive medium. C. Degradation from exposure to a harsh environment. D. Physical movement of two plates against each other, leading to mechanical wear and material transfer at the surface. Or E. Bone death secondary to compromise in blood supply. A is in fact the correct answer for this question. An accurate definition of stress shielding is the decrease in physiological stress in bone due to a stiffer structure sharing load. This stiffer structure is frequently a metal rod or plate or even a hip implant being used to repair a previous fracture. This issue occurs because metal has a substantially higher stiffness than bone. This means that bone will not receive the regular loading that it needs to maintain regular osteoblast activity. This leads to a loss of bone density, which can ultimately compromise the bone in the future and lead to a future fracture. And an exaggerated example of stress shielding can be seen if you take Play-Doh and add a mechanical load, and then take that same Play-Doh, add a stiffer structure, in this case the steel screw, and then add another mechanical load. It will be seen that the stiffer object inside of the second Play-Doh will hold more of the mechanical load and the Play-Doh will not deform as much. This is effectively the same thing that happens when a steel implant is added to bone. Answer choice B is not the correct answer, but is galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion occurs when two metals with a high electrochemical difference are placed in contact inside of an electrolytic medium. This causes the more negative electrochemical potential to be treated like an anode and the more positive one to be treated like a cathode. This results in a system similar to a battery and leads to severe corrosion of the anode very quickly. And a common example of this is the sacrificial zinc anode on a boat to prevent corrosion on other parts of the boat. Answer choice C, degradation from exposure to a harsh environment, is not stress shielding, but is corrosion. Corrosion is typically seen as rust on iron-based products or as the green tarnish on pennies. Corrosion can result in a loss of mechanical properties due to the pitting and loss of material. In a biomedical context, Corrosion can also cause a stronger foreign body reaction due to new or different chemicals becoming present throughout the process of corrosion. Answer choice D, physical movement of two plates against each other leading to mechanical wear and material transfer at the surface is not stress shielding but is abrasion. Abrasion is commonly seen in hip implants where the acetabular cup and the femoral head make contact. This can lead to wearing away of whatever material the acetabular cup is made out of. These lead to small particles being released inside of the body, leading to a stronger foreign body response. And finally, answer choice E. Bone death secondary to compromise in blood supply. This isn't stress shielding. This is avascular necrosis. Necrosis in general is tissue death. Osteonecrosis would be the death in bone. A vascular necrosis is a type of osteonecrosis that is the death of bone due to a loss in blood supply. This can lead to severe pain as well as a loss of mechanical function in whatever bone is experiencing a vascular necrosis. So to recap, question 8. Which of the following is the most accurate definition of stress shielding? The correct answer is the decrease in physiological stress in bone due to a stiffer structure sharing the load. This stiffer structure taking more of the load can cause a decrease in the loading that bone needs to experience to maintain proper density and proper osteoblast activity. That's all I have for you all today. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.